Alright everyone, this is a review of my 2.4 GHz Penryn based MacBook. There is a lot to go over and I'm probably going to have to split this up into two separate videos. So let's begin. Now just to briefly remind everyone, the MacBook that I'm tra transitioning from is a first generation 13 inch MacBook. And this one had a lot of problems with it. It had to go into the Apple repair shop six times and I basically had Apple give me a new one because I had so many problems with it. My old MacBook had a 32-bit Intel Core Duo processor, Yona chip, model number T2500. It sat on a 667 megahertz frontside bus and the memory ran at 667 megahertz. So at least in terms of a parity between the system bus and the actual memory speed, it was a one-to-one -one match. And I like having a one-to-one -one match with my front side bus and my memory. It came with 2 megabytes of on-chip L2 cache, which ran at 2 gigahertz because that's the one that I got. Now, when it comes to actual other specs, that's where Apple kind of let me down. And this was in early 2006, the model that I was using. So the machine that I got, I got it for $900 refurbished and it only came with a 60 gigabyte hard drive and 512 megs of RAM. And this was actually a stock configuration that they were selling in early of 2006. Even in for 2006, 512 megs of RAM with a brand new system or with a system that they would actually normally sell for $1299 is unacceptable. So what I had to do was I went out and from Newegg, I got a 120 gigabyte hard drive that sent me back a hundred bucks and then I got me uh, two gigabytes of RAM and at the time when I bought the RAM memory was still kind of expensive so that sent me back about hundred seventy or hundred eighty dollars for two gigabytes of RAM in addition to that it also had a four time super drive but this super drive was a single layer super drive so it didn't even have the ability to burn to a dual layer DVD now coming into 2008 this is what I'm working with now. It's a Intel Core 2 dual processor, T8300, the Penryn chip. <clears throat> it comes with a 3 megabytes of on-chip L2 cache, which is a 50% increase to the 2 megabytes on the older model. It runs at 2.4 gigahertz, 800 megahertz front side bus, but the memory still runs at 667 megahertz. It's a little bit of a mismatch, but not that big of a deal. The hard drive, this one came with a 160 gigabyte hard drive. They improved the super drive. The super drive actually has a dual air super drive. Uh, it has, uh, you know, basic trackpad. Uh, and in terms of the memory, uh, it, this one actually came with two gigs of RAM pre-installed, which is pretty awesome. But I also have the potential to go up to four gigs of RAM, whereas in my old model, the maximum RAM was two gigs. So, I have uh, the memory ceiling improves uh, doubles going from my old model to this one, so I can go to a full 4 gigs of RAM if I ever need to. Now, when it comes to actually the way that I use my machine, I'm probably not going to upgrade my RAM for the for in the foreseeable future. I mean, the applications I use most often are mostly uh, compilers, and that's at the command line. If I have to, I'll use Emacs or I'll use Eclipse. Um, what else do I use? I use lots of internet browsers, just when I have to reference stuff. Um, I'm pretty much just, I use QuickTime Pro, and I use iMovie and iPhoto. And that's all I use my system for. If I really need to run a Windows application, I can start up VirtualBox, and I'll just run one instance of VirtualBox. I don't need to get ridiculous. I don't need to have Linux... Red Hat, Solaris, I don't need to have five different instances of a virtual machine running, so 2 gigs of RAM is going to be fine for me. I don't see myself upgrading beyond 2 gigs anytime soon. Um, beyond that, there was a little bit of an upgrade in the graphics accelerator. So before, um, I, it has, um, on my old MacBook, the GPU would consume 80 megabytes of memory in OS X. And the way that they, that they wrote OS X is that it locks it down. So on the Windows side, 
when when Windows detects an Intel graphics media or GMA accelerator, Windows will dynamically partition the memory, and uh, the me the memory usage will go between 96 to 224 megs. I forget what the exact numbers are, but the memory usage on the Windows side will grow and shrink and probably just grow over time on the Windows side. In OS 10, they lock it down, and on my old MacBook. 80 megs of system RAM had to be allocated for the graphics processor. On this one, 144 megs is allocated to the GPU. So the uh, for like the texture buffer, I think is 128 megs, and then on top of that, they throw in an additional 16 megs for system setup. So it's 128 megs for for textures and stuff running on the GMA X3100. 16 megs will go sit on top of that, and I, I think that's to set up Quartz Extreme and the OS 10 side of things. And one thing I want to mention about the GMA graphics accelerator. Um, first of all, I can't really give an up, a thumbs up or thumbs down review on this because I really don't do any gaming. Um, as I said, normally the, the only games I play are Quake 3 Arena, and I think that came out in 1998 or 99. So I still play Quake 3, just for fun, just by myself against the computer. And on my Mac Mini, in Boot Camp, I run Flight Simulator version 2002. So for me, I really don't give a damn about, about gaming. What I care about is video processing, audio applications, and uh, programming. And that's it. So gaming, I'm not a big gamer. I really couldn't care about how good or how bad the graphics accelerator is on this thing. But... One thing I want to mention is that um, one thing on YouTube that I notice is from Crash is Geek, and I'll try and pull him up really quickly. Crash is Geek. He mentioned that his uh, that he was having some issues with his with his graphics accelerator or with his MacBook, and he was saying that specifically he was having some graphics card problems part one and two. I made a simple comment on this and they were saying that the fix for him was for him to get more memory because the memory is shared with the GPU. That's true, but getting more RAM isn't going to fix your GPU problem. Uh, for instance, when we go down to activity monitor and we look at system memory, the amount of memory isn't going to make a damn of difference in the quality of your graphics. Because once again, OS 10 locks the the memory requirement for your video card, and it's and in this case it is locked in at 144 megabytes. And one way that you can tell that OS 10 locks down the memory is by looking specifically at this wired memory. And this wired memory is memory that always has to be allocated for the system. And part of this wired memory is for the GPU. So 144 megabytes of system memory is going is counted towards this wired memory. And on top of that, you're going to have wired memory for your GPU. You're going to have wired memory for the kernel. You're going to have wired memory for disk I.O. or other kinds of buffers, system setup. So all of that should be inclusive within OS X, even before or right when you turn on the machine, it's going to be in there. So... I just wanted to bring that up because I watched this video and I was kind of like, that doesn't make any sense. Because he has the exact same one. He has a Penryn based MacBook and his came with 2 gigabytes of RAM. And he was saying that, oh, there's some graphics graphical glitches with my motherboard. That doesn't make sense. It just sounds like that maybe your motherboard's dying or something. Or you just need to get a new GPU or swap it out. So that's just one thing I wanted to bring up is, you know, they told this kid... You need to buy more memory, and more memory is going to fix your GPU problems. It's not. They're just trying to sell you more memory. So I just want, you know, bring it up, be aware of that. So if anyone else claims to have that kind of problem, don't sweat it because it's not true.